Hey everybody, welcome to another edition of Simple Not Easy. I'm Gavin Bowen, and today uh, this video is going to be a little bit different. Um, something that uh, I've always wanted to do was to take part in the Genographic Project. And this year for my birthday, Allie got me the Geno 2.0. There it is. Next Generation. Your Story, Our Story, The Human Story by National Geographic. And uh, so basically I wanted to share this with you, uh, go through it, do the test, and uh, send it out, and make another video when I get all back, and uh, we'll, uh, we'll see what the results are. Basically, go into the booklet here, take a look. Um, Genographic Project is an attempt to answer fundamental questions about where we originated and how we came to populate the Earth. The simple DNA sample sent to our lab, the results will give you an unprecedented view of your lineage. Opportunity to take part in real research study here. So this is pretty cool. Um, it's something that in the end the results um, will tell me if uh, what percentage of Native American I might be, European, uh, specific areas in the world, uh, Central Asia, Southeast Asia, and uh, one of the interesting things it'll tell you is if you are, uh, if you have any Neanderthal in you, uh, which according to this, most non-Africans are between 2% and 4% Neanderthal. Okay, um, yeah, oh, interesting. Indigenous sub-Saharan Africans have no Neanderthal DNA because their ancestors did not migrate through Eurasia. Well, that, uh, that makes sense. Cool, so cool little booklet here. Interesting information. Let's get right to it. Got a little easy one, two, three guide here. Let's see, one, collect DNA samples from your cheeks with the enclosed swabs. Don't worry, it's painless. Right, that should be evident. Um, then review the checklist, read and complete the consent form, mail it, and track your results online. Awesome. So let's uh, see here what we have. I have just an empty plastic bag in here. Maybe that's where the vials go. Let's see. Okay, so we got the, oh yes, cheek swabs and plastic bags. So we'll take out this. Here's a cheek swab. I don't know if you can see right but anyway it's a light swab all right with clean hands carefully open the plastic wrapper of one of the cheek swabs okay to determine how much neanderthal you have in you how easy is it for you to take out a cheek swab from a plastic wrapper i don't want to damage it though okay here we go it has an opening Here it is. Cheek swabs, got a little like toothy thing. You can kind of see, okay. Using one cheek swab, scrape vigorously inside one of your cheeks many times for 45 seconds. 45 seconds, all right, on the timer, here we go. <clears throat> Okay, I don't know how long that was, but I think it was 45 seconds. Seemed long enough. Okay, and now it says eject the swab tip into one of the small vials by pushing the plunger at the top of the applicator stick. Okay, here's the vial. And let's grab that. There, I keep making all those bubbles. All right, let's see. Mm -hmm. Get a camera. And put that there. And voila, it is in. Okay, that's one. Cap it. 
Close cap of the vial, leaving the swab tip inside. No, just eject the swab tip inside, then take it out, and then close the cap. Okay, that's one. Uh, the vial must be shut tightly to ensure the quality of your sample, though. Okay. My sample will include my DNA as well as a turkey sandwich and some chips. Maybe. Repeat steps A through D with the other cheek swab using the second swab. I guess I do it on the other side. Other cheek. This one. He learned from before. He knows how to unwrap now. And I can take this out, put it right there. I did that one, uh, now this one, 45 seconds, and here we go. Okay. Hmm. All right, that was vigorous. And we do the same. Get out. Come on. Okay. This way. This way. There we go. Uncap. And we'll get this in here. Push down on the plunger. go all right cap that and then place both vials inside the small plastic bag place the bag where's that small plastic bag here it is put our vials sample dna you know on csi when they would take like cheek swabs they would do it like for a second they're like yeah that's good this is this was 45 seconds of vigorous cheek swabbing and the inside of my cheeks are sore now so i don't know if the tv gets it wrong then okay samples there they are great and we put those inside the small plastic bag and place the bag along with your completed consent form which i have not completed yet but i will but that's the boring part of this but then i put it in this envelope here it is, and I send it on its way. So that's what we'll do. And now, because of the miracle of movie making, I'm just going to now take you to the result. results. I'm good at editing. Hi. Well, here we are to look at my sequenced genome, sequenced DNA, and what the results are. Are. It's been about three weeks, which is a lot sooner than I was expecting, and that's great for all of us to find out. Uh, different haircut, more facial hair, maybe somebody's in anticipation of their Neanderthal. Well, let's, uh, without further ado, let's take a look. I have the website up, and this will be the first time I am uh, looking at the results with you. Here we go. Your ancestral journey. The origin of our species lies in Africa. It's where humans first evolved and where our species has spent the majority of its time on Earth. We have since migrated to every corner of the globe, a journey that is written in our DNA. Your regional ancestry, 500 years to 10,000 years ago. Let's take a look. It says 70, 76% Western and Central Europe. So, makes sense genetic component of your ancestry is seen in most people of European ancestry, but is highest among those with Spanish, French, Dutch, Swiss, Austrian, German, and Northern Italy ancestry. Okay, so I'm guessing it's probably German, Austrian, because I also have 8% Eastern Europe. Your ancestors who lived in this region thousands of years ago were likely hunters and gatherers who gradually adopted agriculture from their neighbors to the south and west. Some scientists believe that it was in this region of the world where horses were first domesticated. Today, this part of the world is associated with the Slavic and Baltic cultures, as well as Russian, Polish, Ukrainian, Romanian, Bulgarian, Czech, Slavic, and German peoples. Yeah, so definitely probably some German in me, I'm guessing. 6% Asia Minor. Interesting. Today, this component is found at the highest frequency in peoples from Turkey, Lebanon, Syria, Iraq, 
and the Caucasus con uh, countries. Given that it rests in historic and prehistoric crossroads of Europe and Asia, this component also occurs in varying frequencies in other neighboring populations throughout the region. Okay, and then 9% 9 Jewish diaspora. Oh. This component of ancestry is associated with the exodus of the Jewish group from the Middle East to various regions of Europe. That's all, it says about, that's all it says about that. So now it says, what your results mean. We compared your DNA results to the reference populations we currently have in our database and estimated which of these populations were most similar to you in terms of the genetic markers you carry. This doesn't necessarily mean that you belong to these groups, but these groups were a similar genetic match and can therefore be used as a guide to help determine why you have certain results. Remember, this is a mixture of recent, past six generations, and ancient patterns established over thousands of years. So you may see surprising matches. Read each of the population descriptions below to better interpret your particular results. Okay, here we go. So my first reference population, Dutch. This reference group is based on a Dutch population. This population is similar in composition to that from Germany, but differs in percentage mixture or gene flow from British and Scandinavian regions to the north and west of the region. The large Western Central European component of it component is itself a genetic mixture of populations that first reached Europe as hunter-gatherers some 40,000 years ago, but later intermixing with agriculturists arriving in the past 10,000 years from the Middle East. So a, um, the Dutch percentage says here Western Central Europe, 59%, I am 76%. Um, it says Great Britain and Ireland of 19%, Scandinavian 13%, Eastern Europe 6%, Southern Europe 3%. So Dutch. Okay, your second reference population, French. This reference population is based on groups living in modern day France. The two largest components are Western Central and Southern Europe. The former is a composite of the continental hunter and gatherers, some of which may have interacted and mixed with Neanderthals, the, most, the more recent migrations from the Middle East. The Southern European component is associated with agriculturists living in the Fertile Crescent to Europe in the past 8,000 years, introducing crops such as wheat and barley. So a French percentage would be Western Central Europe, 59%. Again, I'm 76. Southern Europe, 21. I don't have any Southern Europe in me. Uh, Great Britain, Ireland says I have 7%. Um, or it says French percentage is 7%. I have none of that. Um, Jewish diaspora is 3%. And Eastern European is 5%. So I have a mixture of those. Um, and then it says Northern Africa, 2%, Scandinavia, 2%. So based on this, my results mean that the reference population that I can reference based off of my DNA sequencing, my regional ancestry, um, Western and Central Europe, the highest percentage, uh, giving me a reference population of Dutch and French. All right, your deep ancestry. This where we get very particular. Okay, let's res let's explore those results. So it's broken up in different sections here. So um, if you've already shut this off and, and you're no longer watching, I understand this is incredibly interesting to me. So I'm gonna continue going. Um, hope you're enjoying it too. So let's take a look. Um, so we'll start with the maternal line. Your maternal journey begins here. Oh my gosh, okay. I have to take a look at this because there is actually a lot of a lot of information here okay oh my gosh wow uh it literally shows like the beginning route you know somewhere in like ethiopia where they would have left out of my maternal line oh my gosh this is crazy okay this is more extensive than i thought so uh, my feelings right now is I'm just going to give you the juicy stuff, which would be hominin ancestry, 50,000 years ago and older. The average Neanderthal uh, in people is 2.1%. 
I have in me. 1.1%. As our modern human ancestors migrated through Eurasia, they met other hominin species and interbred. These cousin species, like the Neanderthals, are now extinct, but the genetic makeup of nearly everyone born outside of Africa today includes 1-2% to DNA from these hominins, living relics of ancient encounters. 1%. All right. I'm definitely going to explore this more. There's a lot more of the um, deep ancestry I'm going to get into and, and look at. I'll uh, maybe write some of that on the website. Um, simple, not easy. But uh, for right now, I guess what we uh, take away from this is I have a majority of Western Central Europe um, in my regional ancestry. So um, the populations would include, according to this, Dutch and French. Um, which I had some inkling um, that I had in me. And I guess the, the somewhat of a surprise of the regional uh, ancestry would be the 8% Asia Minor, which is interesting, and 9% uh, Jewish diaspora, which is um, pretty cool too. Awesome. Very cool. Very cool stuff. Um, okay, that does it for this episode. Um, I would encourage everybody to get this um, test taken uh, to sequence your DNA, add it to National Geographic. There are a lot of other uh, groups out there that, that do this, but I think National Geographic actually has um, a handle um, on this and, and they're continuing to gather all the information that um, uh, people have added to um, the research and it's just ever growing and important to do so that we can unlock more and more information about where we came. I mean, we're talking about 100,000, up to 100,000 years ago of our own ancestry. Um, that science is real. That science is cool. And I encourage everybody to go out and um, do it. Uh, it's, it's easy. It's easy. And it's really cool. Um, but now that I know that I only have 1% Neanderthal in me, I'm definitely going to uh, think about a shave. Um, but until next time, this is Gavin Bowen with Simple Not Easy. Uh, have a great one.